and he gave it to me. God does that sometimes. He just gives us stuff. Even when we're not ready, if we, if we beg too much, he'll give it to us. And, and he gave it to him. And, and it says that this is what we find ourselves in verse 13. Now, let's talk about leaving a legacy that teaches us to trust God no matter what. The teachers of my, my great granddaddy, Papa, I learned something that made me feel real good. I was watching a video yesterday of my blessing. She was saying that Papa, that, uh, that, that, that her daddy, her grandfather, what, he did, well, what Papa decided to do, said that after slavery, said that, I can't remember if it was Papa or her granddaddy. Papa would be her daddy. But either her daddy or her granddaddy. Her granddaddy. Her granddaddy. What, they, what he decided to do, he had his four boys. And he said that, he said that what two of them decided to do, they kept the slave master's name. And then two took on the name Moses. He said, we don't want the slave master's name. And, and, and took on a new name by the name of Mosley. That, 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 that impressed me because when I began to look up that, that line, I, I see the, 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 the legacy that was, that was left. And even when I look at, at Papa, he's been going, and going on for a while, but some of him is in all of our family members that you see here today. And every Sunday morning, St. Paul, we all get blessed with a little bit of Papa. St. Augustine gets stirred up with a little bit of pop. Um, was taught to by my great granddaddy Papa. He put something in me that always reminded me that God had my back. That, 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 that God had my, my back and he would make sure that, that, that I was always covered and, and taken care of. And, and what it does, I it, 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 it teaches you, and I, I always, family, family y'all, but they real accustomed to hearing it, but I always tell them about how I used to be walking down the road with my granddaddy, Wesley, my granddaddy, and we'd be walking down the road, dirt road in Hawthorne, and, and the dog would start coming, barking and growling, and normally when I wasn't with granddaddy, I'd find a car or a tree or something. Right? <laughs> but when I was with Granddaddy, I, I noticed that, that as I walked next to Granddaddy, Granddaddy didn't even slow up. He kept walking at the same pace. And that dog that would normally run me off, that dog sat in the yard by a tree and barked. But that had good sense not to come out and, and try Granddaddy. <laughs> And what I realized that that dog was pretty much, he was motivated by fear. I was scared. He sensed that I was scared of him. And so he, 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 he bowled up at me and he would charge me. But he realized my granddaddy wasn't scared of him at all. He sit over there and yapping in the yard, but he wouldn't come out in that road at my, at my granddaddy. And, 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 and the legacy that, that, that's been, that, that was placed in me it, 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 it showed me there's no need to fear anything or anyone. Amen. There's no one that, that's earned the right to, to have me or have you afraid of them. When, when God has our back, and I'm not, I'm not even talking about physical people, cancer cannot intimidate you. Poverty cannot intimidate you. Diabetes cannot intimidate systems. For injustice and racist systems cannot intimidate you. When you have, when, when, when you realize that God has your back. And, and that's a good thing about a legacy because when you walk in it, you can put it in generations that will come behind you. Yes. And as I look at verse 13, verse 13 of the scripture, it says, a few days later, this younger son, it says he packed all his belongings and he took a trip to a distant land. And there he wasted all his money on wild living. Young son packed all his stuff and moved as far away as 
he could. Can I tell you? That sounded like me. You know, we, we talk about this prodigal son as if he needs some, some different and bad kind of person, but he's no different from any of us. Even some of us, after we've met Christ, we, we have some experiences that say, I want to get as far from that place as possible. I can, I can remember, I, I, I can remember I, I, when it was time to, you know, as y'all can see, I've come from a, a family that, that's real connected to the church, a whole bunch of preachers and stuff like that. And, um, and so I was, well, my cousins, right, they, 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 the priests were lying and saying that, that, um, <laughs> that it wasn't safe to be around me and I played practical jokes and all that kind of stuff. People couldn't go to sleep, but really I was a real sweet kid. And I was a, I was a real sweet kid. And, um, and my, my, my mama and my daddy, they, they, they raised me up, raised me up good. And, um, and so I really, other than practical jokes, I really didn't get in trouble. You know, like, a bad kind of trouble. But the one thing that happened when it was time to go to college, I, I thought I was going a long way because, you know, I lived on one side of Gainesville and the University of Florida was on the other side of Gainesville. And, and, and once I got approved, my dorm got approved, I ain't my mom, mom or dad, I ain't need nobody to help me out. I had a little four pinto. I put all my stuff in my four pinto. I got it so quick, I ran over my sister cat. And, 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 and I felt bad, dug, dug a hole and put the cat in the hole. And, and but I, I was ready to get out of there and go as far as possible. This young son, it says that he, he packed all this stuff and moved as far as far away as he could. Something was going on at the house that he was not feeling in that moment. Maybe it was too restricted. Maybe he wanted to, to try some other things. Maybe he wanted to, to try his hand at some other stuff and didn't feel comfortable doing it at his house. But can I tell you, that, that, that's nothing new. Anybody in here that, that's honest about it will admit that, that sometimes, whether it's home, whether it's place, sometimes places will place so many restrictions on it. Even if it's for, if it's for your good, they say, you just want to get out there and try it yourself. You just, I don't, I don't care how holy you, I don't care how many tongues, I don't care all about none of that right there. Sometimes you just want to get out there and try it yourself. And there was something going on at the house, I can't tell you what it was. It seemed like it was a good house, but this young man wanted, for whatever reason, wanted to get out of the house and he went as far away as he could. But in verses 14 through 16, it says, about the time, about that time, his money ran out of great swept over the land, and he began to starve. And he persuaded the local farmer to hire him to feed his pigs. And the boy became so hungry that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him, but no one gave him anything. He said, things got tough, and that's how it is in life. That, that, that's how things go in life. When we, when we step out there and we, and we try things, I, I don't beat anybody over the head for trying things. You, we, we can't run folk life. We can't, they can't tell folk how to live. The best thing that we can do is give an example, which instills a legacy. And then the Bible says, train up a child in the way. And when he or she grows old, they'll not depart. But, but we can't hold people in a box. We gotta let folk experience it and see God for themselves. As much as I went to church, as much as I sat around, as much as I sat in my house, I ain't hard thrown up. Nothing. Right on, bro. All right. 
We can tell folk this and that, but folks see our lives. We can claim this and that, but folks see our lives. And here it says that it says it says that when he went out there for whatever reasons, it says that things got tough. Anybody in here ever been in a tough place? I'm talking about a, a, a tough place. Life was life was going good, then all of a sudden a, a medical mishap. But life life was going good, then all of a sudden a negative report. Life was going good, and then all of a sudden they had to sit on the job. Life was going. Good, and then you, 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 your spouse has stepped out on you. Life was going good, and, and now kids are messing up. Life was going good. Now you got some crazy thoughts in your head. You, you were doing good, but now you related to Paul. Say, even when I want to do right, evil is always present. Like, life was going good, and, and he said, but, 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 but until every life, some rain must fall. And the scripture says, it says that, that while he was out there, things got tough. He, the, the, the money ran out. And, and you know how it is when the money runs out. But as long as you got money, you got a car full and you rolling and you and you rolling. And, but, but, but let the car break down. And now, now I'll see how many friends you got. And, and, and as long as you buy lunch, you got a whole lot of folks that want to go with you. But, but let your money run short and, and see who's going to hang with you. Now, as long as you lending money, folks will folk be your best friend. Now, but when you need somebody, folks somehow can't seem to answer the phone. And it says that all of a sudden, it says while he was going through his thing and trying to, to learn about who he is, it says that there was no money, it says that there was no food, and no family. No money, no food, and no family. No money, no food, and no family. One thing that I can tell you about family, we might fall out. Oh, but when the rubber meets the road, no, we gonna we gonna we gonna we gonna we gonna help one another up. Might get a little upset. Might get a little bothered. I might even talk about you. Y'all better not talk about it. This boy had a tough spot, no money, no food, and no family. And the scripture says he was at a point that was so low in his life that even the pods that they fed the pigs started looking good. Y'all say, well, how did that happen? It, it ain't that hard. Let me, let me explain to you what the parts were. The parts came from what was known as a carob tree. And, and, and they were used to fatten the swine. That's, that was the whole purpose, to get the pig as fat as they could. Get the hog as fat as they could. I mean, it wasn't that good. In they were strictly, they, they, they were strictly to fatten the hog. And then what would also happen to those who were afflicted with poverty, it says that, that, that they would also, the hogs would eat them, but then they would eat them too. People that had any types of, of means wouldn't eat the pot because they were no good for you. You know, there's some, there's some stuff that, if y'all don't mind me talking, there's some stuff that we eat, not because we wanted to eat, but the folks that our parents and grandparents worked for, the stuff that they didn't want that was left over the feet, the tail, the ears, the intestines, all the stuff that they didn't want, they passed it on to the folk that were, were lacking because those folk were desperate enough to have substance that they ate it just to live. But the reality is that the pods were really not a food that anybody that had something would eat if they had any choice. It was it was beneath them. And growing up with the, the legacy that was put in me, there was something that was simply beneath me. I'm, I'm not going to say beneath everybody in my family, but as I took my legacy, because everybody has to drink the legacy themselves. But as I drink the legacy, and as I saw what was in front of me, and I saw what God wanted me to do with what he put inside, there were some things that, that I just knew better than. Some things that I just didn't do. 
But sometimes you get out there so far. There's some things that you know that you're better than. Some things that you know that's beneath you, you'll try it anyway. Right. I, I, I was taught right, but I, I still cheated on my wife. I was taught right, but I, I still did things that, 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 would, that would blow your mind. I, 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 I was taught right, but I still got out there and tried things that I knew that were beneath me. Still got out there and tried things. I'm a cousin, Mike. Many of y'all have heard my story about when I told you, me and my, my cousin, Mike, Mike and Man, they were having some problems with the Coco. And at this point, you know, uh, at this point, I, I, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. When it comes to being a thug with me, it's all like that dog I was talking about. It's all, there's no thug in me. There's literally no thug in me, but I can talk the best thug talk. And so my, my little cousin, Mike, and man, they were having some problems with some boys with Coco, so I got me and my other cousin, Gene. And we loaded up in my Bronco, and, and I was at a I was at a thuggy state in my life. But I wasn't the kind of thug that's willing to go to prison, though. I wasn't. That's, I want y'all to clarify, that's not the kind of thug I was. I was thug until them cups get put on you. And so that's right when the police get ready to pull them cups out. I'm not absurd. I'm talking proper. I'm, but I was, I, but, but, and so me and Gene went to, we went to Coco and we went to go and, and, and help Mike and Man straighten up some stuff. We went there because I told you, y'all can talk about it, but, but I mean, I can talk about it, but y'all can't talk about it. And so we got there, we got at Coco, and Mike and Van jumped in, uh, jumped in the dress. So we rolled up, rolled up to the park. We rolled up like ain't none of us strapped at all. But we rolled up like we strapped. <laughs> Pull up below the Bronco, used to sit real low and wild. Got the window. Y'all know more I ain't on that movie, Boys in the Hood, how they lowered the window right there. We looking. And so all the boys on the, all the boys at the basketball court, they looking, they looking. So I told, I told Mike and Van, I said, go out there, I agree with those, go out there and see if any of them still got a problem. <laughs> so Mike and man, when they walk, they walk out to the basketball court, we still sit there. Everybody trying to figure out what's a new problem, what's a new problem, what's going on? Mike and man go up there, ain't nobody have a problem no more. <laughs> Mike and man come get back in the car. And so we roll real slow, come on back down the road, and going back down to Bobo High. Bobo right back down. <laughs> and so we didn't have a victory. We had a victory. But then all of a sudden, somebody said, there's some people coming down the road. <laughs> and so the 10 scary people on the basketball school that went in the apartment, or projects or whatever they were called, right off the court. And they done got by 7 8 and 4. <laughs> now all my thug is spent. No more thug. I'm fat out scared. As tough as Gene was, there ain't no everybody scared now. But everybody. But thank God for Bobo. <laughs> Bobo walked out the house and told him, oh, no, I ain't going to be none of that right there. All the people stopped right there at the corner, and nobody came down. Can I tell you that in life, when you get too far out there, things will turn negative on you. I ain't have no good at doing what I was doing anyway, even though I'll probably do it again today. <laughs> but things will turn negative on you just like that. Uh, and this young man, this young man found himself, he, he thought he was, he, I, 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 I want to go and learn who I am. I want to go out and experience the world. But in the midst of experiencing the world, it says things begin to turn. No food, no money, no family. And the scripture says that even the pods became a trap. And he found himself desiring to do things that he never would have done in his house. He found himself desiring to eat things that he never would have had to eat, have eaten in his house. He, he found himself in a tough place. And I don't know about you, but, but have you ever been there before? There were things you never thought you would do? You find yourself now desiring to do. Some of us, there's some things that we're, we're doing that we thought that we never, ever do. That's because you can't, once you get out there, you got to take what life offers you. 
And I tell you what, I'm just so appreciative of God. I'm so appreciative of everything that God does because despite how far I get out there, God seems to always be able to have enough ability to bring me back in. No matter how separated I get, God always seems to have the ability to bring me back, even when the pods become attractive. Even when I do, when I find myself doing things that I know I was not raised to do. I thank God that when everybody else has written me off. I thank God that when everyone else has now given me a label of, of sorry, no good. I thank God when everybody else has, has referred to me as a weed, a weed head, a hormone. I thank God that when everybody else got something to say. I'm thankful for a God who chooses not to judge me. I'm, I'm thankful for a God who chooses not to write me off. I'm, I'm thankful for a God that, that don't look at me funny out of that. I'm thankful because folk will do that. And then even when we try to, to, to try to get things back in order, folk that say that they know God, folk that come in here and sing and shout every Sunday when I, when I walk in and, and don't look like they want me to look and don't smell like they want me to smell. They look at me funny, but, but I'm so thankful that I serve a God that, that chose not to put a label on us. I'm so thankful that I serve a God that, that chose not to write me off. When, even when I went as far away as I could from home, I tried to separate myself as far as I could from home, I found myself out there eating, eating the pods that I fed the pig, knowing better but it feels so good. And God is speaking a word to somebody in here today. God said, don't you become so bigoty that you do the folk what I won't do the folk. God said, don't you become so judgmental that you judge folk that I'm not judging. Don't you become so condemning that you write folk out who I never planned for. I thank God that when I was in the lowest of my mess, that God said, Ron, that I have for you. I have plans to prosper you and you have a good future. God told me to tell somebody today, it does not matter that you took your inheritance and went off to a far place. God said it does not matter that you took your legacy and went off as far as you could. At this moment, you might not look like the ancestors. At this moment, you sound like the ancestors, but God said, let me tell you something, you look just like them and sound just like them because they're inside of each and every one of you. Somebody say yeah, somebody say yeah, when I really became liberated as a preacher, it was at the moment that I realized it's not my job to look like somebody. 